At this time, we'd like to invite the men from the United States Army to please render rights for your veteran, please.
You folks would like to be able to move close for the religious services, please. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Pastor Tracy Smith. I'm the pastor at First Baptist Church in Mount Zion. This morning, we've come to pay our respects and demonstrate our love and care for one another during difficult times by paying our respects to Albert Cross. And being here for one another during these difficult circumstances, praying for one another, loving one another, means more to each of us than probably more than we could ever imagine. On behalf of the family, I want to say thank you for being here today. Now today is a day that we should allow God's word and speak to us. We should allow God's word to comfort us during our time of need. And as we seek God's comfort, we need to seek him in prayer. Jesus, when he was asked by the disciples, how should we pray? Jesus responded by saying, pray then like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who de have debt against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we turn to you today at this very moment, seeking your comfort in your presence. We meet today to remember our dear friend and loved one, Albert. And as we do, we thank you for being to us the God of all comfort. We thank you for being our tower of refuge and strength during times of trouble. Today we claim the promises of scripture that say even when we walk through difficult times, you are with us. You are our comforter. This morning, we meet as the people who are hurting, who are grieving, who are feeling the sting of death, even though we know that the pains of this world no longer burden Albert. Missing him still causes us pain and grief. This morning, we ask that you give to us perspective as we face the reality of death. And we pray that we will grow in our perspectives of the truths of life as we share in these moments of memorial. And we pray that we will give you the glory in all things. And we ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible teaches us in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, it says, There is a time for everything. There is a time for every activity under heaven. There is a time to be born, a time to die, a time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to be silent, and a time to speak. For Albert... There was a time to be born, and that was on April 3rd of 1933 in Decatur, the son of Harry and Cora Price. Albert had two brothers and a sister who preceded him in death. For Albert, there was a time to be married. Albert used to stop by a restaurant with a friend of his every day after he had finished a double shift to have a cup of coffee. And when he stopped by that restaurant to have that cup of coffee, it wasn't because he liked coffee. It wasn't because he enjoyed spending time with his friends. It was because he had discovered the love of his life. And so it was, he married Sally Niles on September 20th, 1960. In September, they would have been married 60 years. Albert would do anything for Sally. Anything at all. Except on his 50th anniversary, he did get what he wanted, and they got to go to Alaska instead of Hawaii. 
But other than that, he always <laughs> did everything he could to take care of Sally. Whether it was flowers, candy, or cards. He wanted her to know that he respected her and he loved her. Then there was a time to have children. Sally and Albert were blessed with four children, two daughters and two sons. Daughters Brenda and Michelle, also known as Butch and Mitch to Albert. Sons Don and Ken. And then those blessings were even multiplied greater as they had nine grandchildren, seven great-grandchildren, and an eighth grandchild due in July. And there was a time to work. Albert served in the U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force and was a Korean War veteran. Albert was, Albert was a dedicated, hard-working man who worked for the Redbird gas stations and for the Staley Company. Albert would never miss a day of work. And he would do whatever it had to do, whatever he had to do to make sure that his family was taken care of, working two jobs at one time, working all the overtime that he could in order to take care of his family. Many a time, Sally would put the four kids in the car and drive to where Albert was working so that he could, she could take his dinner to him as he worked those extra shifts. Albert retired in 1993. But just like he never missed work, he never missed a day at McDonald's to sit around with his friends and drink a cup of coffee. Albert's devotion and tireless work ethic were passed on to his kids. There was a time to live. This respectful, thoughtful, loving, ornery family man made sure to devote all of his vacation to his family. That was their time. Whether it was going to Virginia Beach, the Rockies, or Florida, or Nashville, he spent time with his family. Albert never met a stranger, and it always seemed to be that no matter where they were, he met somebody he knew. He enjoyed fishing, especially with the boys and the grandkids. All you had to do was call him with the tea time, and he was ready to go golfing. He was golfing in the summer, bowling in the winter. He loved spending time with the bowling league, working on old cars, showing the kids how to change a tire or change the oil. But if he really wanted to relax, he'd sit down with a Louis L'Amour Western book and read it, or watch a John Wayne movie. And then there was a time to die. And so it was on Friday, May 15th, Albert Price, 87 years old, of Mount Zion, Illinois, passed away at home with his family and friends by his side. As I said before, during days like today, we need to allow Scripture to speak to us. One of the Scriptures that I think that is very important for us is the 23rd Psalm. There are over 150 Scriptures that are attested to King David as the author the one that is most known is the 23rd Psalm, and I think it's important for us to reflect on that scripture this morning. We read, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We often think of King David as a mighty warrior and a mighty king. How could someone like that ever have trouble? And if he did have trouble, who would he turn to? David turned to his mighty shepherd. He looked to God for his comfort. The very first verse, he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. David was a good shepherd. He took care of his sheep. He did whatever he had to to save his sheep. But this good shepherd even had a shepherd himself. And that was the Lord in heaven. 
You see, sheep are entirely dependent upon the shepherd. They're dependent upon everything from that shepherd. Food, shelter, protection. And David says here, he is requiring or looking to God for his protection, for his shelter, and for his comfort, and for everything that he needs. We too can look to God during our times of need for all of this. Next passage says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. You see, our good shepherd knows where the green pastures are. Our good shepherd knows where the quiet waters are. And it's his job to take us there. It's our job to follow him. We will only reach those green pastures and quiet waters if we will obediently follow our shepherd to those places. If we don't follow him, we're going to end up in barren lands and stormy seas. You see, our shepherd will give us rest. And he'll take us to the safe place that we need to be. Because it's the shepherd's job to protect his sheep through the night. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You see, as David is writing these words of the 23rd Psalm, he is in fear of his own life. He is fearing his own death. And David says, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Because, you see, death casts a very long shadow. And everyone is helpless in the presence of death. You see, we can struggle with our other enemies. We can struggle with pain. We can struggle with suffering. We can struggle with injuries because you, you medicate it or we can treat them. But when death comes, there is no amount of medicine or money or treatment that can beat it. You see, we feel powerless in death's presence, just like you may feel that way today. But I want you to notice what David says. David says, death is a shadow. And we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Why is it only a shadow? Because Jesus, our shepherd, defeated death once and for all at the cross. And all that remains of death, for those who've trusted in him, it is a shadow. And just like a shadow of a snake cannot bite you, just like the shadow of a sword cannot cut you, the shadow of death should bring no fear to those who know Jesus. Who better to lead us through the shadow of death than Jesus Christ? The other thing I want you to notice, the second thing is that we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In other words, we're not going to camp out there. We're not going to spend a lot of time there. God will see us through. And it says the rod and the staff comfort us. Those were the tools of the shepherd that he used whenever he was taking care of his sheep. And they brought great comfort to the sheep. Because you see, the shepherd with his rod every night as he put the sheep away would pack those sheep. And he would count them at the end of each day. Because he wanted to make sure that his sheep were accounted for. And if one was missing, he went to find it. You see, David is following his shepherd. And he found comfort in knowing that God would account for him, that God would care for him, that God would protect him, and that God would lift him up out of dangerous situations. What an incredible shepherd. Folks, it is my prayer that today we find comfort in our great shepherd. Because the words of David were not only true then, but they are true today for us. And they're true for anyone who knows the one true good shepherd, Jesus. You can find comfort in Jesus if you'll give your life to him. Jesus loves us so much that he left the glories of heaven to walk this earth. He loved us so much that he lived a life we couldn't live and died a death so that we would not have to. You want the comfort of the shepherd. Put your trust in Jesus. So in light of these promises that God has given us in his word and in as much in God's sovereign wisdom and purpose he took Albert to be home with him we now commit him to his final resting place to await to await the fulfillment of another promise that we find in scripture 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 where Paul writes brothers we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. 
We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. The words that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica are words that were written for encouragement for us for days like today. Because you see, while the others who don't know Jesus see death as an absence of hope, those who do know Jesus see it as a blessed hope and a blessed assurance that we will meet again together in heaven. Let's go to the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you for the glorious hope that we have in Jesus Christ. We thank you for the comfort that we have concerning those who are asleep in Jesus, knowing that our Lord and Savior has prepared a place for those who place their faith in him. Father, we thank you for the gift of God that is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Father, for the family today, for the loved ones, for the friends, we ask that there might be a recognition that you work all things together for good for those who love you. Father, I pray that they will find comfort in your arms. Even though your ways are not our ways, your thoughts are not our thoughts. Father, we are going to trust in you and we not on our own understanding. Father, I pray and ask for the family and friends that they might cast their cares upon you and find comfort in and the knowledge of what death means for those who know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It means heaven where there's no more sorrow and no more pain. Father, I pray and ask for the family and friends that you would comfort them and strengthen them in the days ahead. And Father, I pray that they will find strength and rest in you. And it's all these things that we ask in the precious name of Jesus, the King of kings the Lord of lords, our Savior. Amen.